Welcome to What Does If Name Equals Main Do in Python? My name is Ariane, and I'll be your instructor for this course. Have you seen this code before? It's an if statement checking if a variable called name is equal to the string of main. And there are two underscores before and after name and main. This strange looking line of code pops up a lot in the Python world. Maybe you've seen it in a tutorial and had no idea what it did. Maybe you've used it in your own code without knowing why. Perhaps you know another language that has a special main function and you've assumed this is the same thing. And maybe you know what it does, but not how it works or why it looks so unlike the clean, simple Python you're used to. If so, you've come to the right place. In this course, you'll find out the answers to these questions and more. But first, saying if name equals main is a bit of a mouthful. For short, you can call it the name main idiom, which is how we'll refer to it in this course. Here's an overview of what you'll learn throughout the course. In the next lesson, you'll learn exactly what the name main idiom does. Next, you'll understand how it works. Then you'll see when you should use it and when you should probably use something else. And then if you're going to use it, you'll get tips on how to use it well. Finally, we'll review what you learned throughout the course and you'll get some additional resources to continue learning about related topics. So let's get started looking at what the name main idiom does. Let's start by looking at what if dunder name equals dunder main is actually doing. To demonstrate, here's an example program that doesn't use if dunder name equals dunder main in it. In the file repeat.py, you've got a repeat function that accepts some text and a number and returns that text repeated that number of times with new line characters in between so that they print on separate lines. At the bottom of the file, it asks the user to input some text and then it calls the repeat function with that text and the default number of repetitions, which is two, and then it prints it out. Now, there are two ways you could use this file. First, you could run it as a script and second, you could import it as a module. Let's use repeat.py both ways and see what happens. To run repeat.py as a script in the command line, you would just use the Python command, then the file name and press enter. Here on the left, you can see our code for repeat.py and on the right, we've got our console or terminal. To run this file as a script, we can use the Python command and then the script name, which is repeat.py. Now it's asking for some text. I can type in hello world. And then it repeats that with the default number of repetitions, which is two. Great, so that's what we expect. Next, to import repeat.py as a module, you would add an import statement to your file or your Python console. So let's try importing it in a Python console. I'm going to go back to the terminal and use the Python command to open up the Python console or Python REPL. We can do from repeat, which is the file, import repeat, which is the function. Okay, and it's asking us for some text. That's a bit odd. And can we still use that repeat function? Yep, that works. So we can still import that repeat function, but there's a bit of a side effect happening here, which is that it's asking us for some text. And that's not what we expect when we're just trying to import a function into our console. This is happening because even if you're just importing one function, the whole file is executed first, and then the definitions are imported in. Let's look at another example where you're importing into another file. Here's a file called lyrics.py. And at the top, you've got an import statement that says from repeat, import repeat. 
Note that in order for this import statement to work as written, lyrics.py must be in the same folder as repeat.py. So after the first line that imports the repeat function from the repeat module, it prints the lyrics for the song Around the World by Daft Punk, calling the repeat function with the text of Around the World and 144 repetitions. And then it prints it out. So in the terminal, if we ran lyrics.py, Python lyrics.py, it's now asking us for some text. Once we press enter, the rest of the file runs as expected. So that's not what we want. When we just look at this file, it doesn't look like we should be having to type anything in first before the file runs. So how do we fix this? Let's try adding if dunder name equals dunder main to repeat.py. Here we're back in the repeat.py file. And just after the repeat function, we are going to add if dunder name is equal to dunder main as a string. And then indent the next two lines and save it. So going back to the terminal, we can run the file again as python repeat.py. And it works just like we would expect. But now if we were to run lyrics.py, we're no longer asking for any text input and it runs as expected. And if we were to import it in the Python console from repeat, import, repeat, now it's not prompting us for text anymore. Great, it worked. So what does if dunder name equals dunder main actually doing? Well, it allows you to specify some code that only executes when the file is run as a script, and it doesn't execute when the file is imported as a module. Now there's no official name for this line of code, but as stated in the overview, you can call it the name main idiom. And if you look at this page in the Python documentation, you can see why. Here's the documentation where this line of code is referenced, and it's talking about the Dunder main name. And if you scroll down to idiomatic usage, you can actually see where if Dunder name equals Dunder main is being referenced in the documentation. So that's why we call it the name main idiom, at least in this course. Now that we know what the name main idiom does, why is it useful? Well, for one, it allows you to avoid side effects when importing files as modules, like we saw when repeat.py was asking for some text input. And this is the case when you're importing into the Python REPL or into another file. Or if you already have a module, it allows you to add an entry point to that file so that you can use a function in it, like repeat, right from the command line. And now that we've seen what the name main idiom does, let's look at how it works. In the previous lesson, we looked at what the name main idiom does and why it's useful. Now let's look at how it actually works and why it looks a little bit odd. Let's look at the different parts of if dunder name is equal to dunder main. Starting with the if statement, this is just a regular conditional if statement. Next, we have dunder name, which is what's known as a dunder variable. And Python uses dunder variables for storing metadata, which is data about the program that it's running. The dunder name variable stores the name of a module when it's loaded. So we'll talk about module names in a bit. But first, a side note about dunders. There are many dunders in the Python language, both dunder variables and dunder methods. The name one is just one that you're most likely to encounter first. We call them dunders because they have double underscores at the beginning and the end of the name. 
And Python uses this weird naming convention to mark it as reserved for Python's uses. They're intentionally kind of ugly or weird or complex looking because a regular programmer would never want to use this naming convention in their own code. It also makes it very obvious about what's part of the Python language itself and what's part of a program that someone has written in Python. You also shouldn't be creating your own dunders because they might conflict with Python's current dunders or ones that they might use in future Python versions. For modules, the dunder name variable is set to either the string of dunder main if it's in the top level code environment or the module's name if it's being imported. The top level code environment could be the REPL session, which is the global scope when you run Python in interactive mode, or the script passed to the Python interpreter as a file argument, which just means if you ran Python file.py, then file.py would be that script where that's the top level code environment. When you run Python repeat.py as a script, Python sets repeat.py's dunder name variable to dunder main. Then it checks if dunder name is equal to dunder main and that if statement is true, so it asks for user input and calls the repeat function. But now what happens when you run Python lyrics.py? In lyrics.py, the first line is from the repeat module, import the repeat function. As you learned in the previous lesson, this will actually execute repeat.py. So now inside of repeat.py, Python sets the file's dunder name variable to the string of repeat because it's not in the top level code environment and that's the name of the module. Then it checks if dunder name is equal to dunder main, which it's not, it's equal to repeat. So that if statement is false, and no extra code is executed inside of repeat.py. Then the repeat function is imported into lyrics.py and the rest of lyrics.py can get executed. Here we have a file called name main.py and we're printing the dunder name variable as well as the type of the dunder name variable. Then we're using the name main idiom and printing got here if it was true. We can run this file as a script by saying python name main.py and name is dunder main and the class is a string. And it does print out got here because name was equal to main in this case. When we ran this file directly as a script, it became the top level code environment and dunder name is set to main. Now, if we were to import this, let's see what happens. We can import it in the Python console. We can say import name main like that. And now the dunder name is equal to name main, which is also a string. And got here did not print out. To summarize, the if is just a regular conditional statement. Dunder name is a variable that stores the name of the module. And the string dunder main is the value of dunder name when you're in the top level code environment. This allows some code to run when the file is run directly and not when it's imported into another file. So that's how the name main idiom works. And in the next lesson, you'll see when you should be using it.